Hi. Hello, hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Um, did you you which link did you use to get in here? The one in the appointment? Let's see, the one Corey just sent me. Okay. Which oh. is connected to the for the calendar. It it okay. comes to the calendar. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if it's the same as the tiny URL that's online. Oh. There's Sarah. Hi, Farah. Hi there, how are you? I'm well, congratulations hey. on getting home. <laughs> Did you enjoy your time in Boulder? Did you get to do anything fun? Um, <laughs> not really. It was a really <laughs> quick trip, but I mean, I got to see the city because my ride along, there weren't any calls. And so, I mean, we literally went around the whole city. So that was good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. We're pretty, it's a pretty city. So <laughs> yeah, it is very pretty. Yeah. I, I think I want to schedule a day for some sightseeing when it's a little warmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am not a cold person at all, even though I am from Chicago. Um, but yeah, maybe the next trip. Summer, um, summer's pretty awesome. Gotta is say, it? especially yeah. on Middle Street, once the tulips start coming up, I mean, it's just like, it's it's a little piece of paradise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'll definitely figure out how to come in the summer. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find a way. We'll find, we'll a, find a way. We'll find a pressing <laughs> need to have you here. <laughs> well, I think there was a proposal that was sent today that outlined a late spring, early summer. Yes, there was. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, Corey, is it the same link that was on the, I can't hear you. Hi, Milan. Hi, Milan, how are Hi. you? Good, thank you. I don't like technology anymore. <laughs> anymore? I updated on, well, I didn't before, but now I really don't. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if I came in the right way. I came in as a panelist, not an attendee. How do you guys, is that okay? I promoted you to a panelist. Oh, okay. Hey, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Good to see you. And uh, Chico will not be joining us today. He, okay. he texted Hadassah and I, um, just he's, okay. he's under the weather. So hey, thank, uh, you. thank you for letting us know. Okay. Miss Madeline's connection. Corey, the reason I'm asking is because I've had a couple community members who plan on coming and I don't know if the link online is updated. Oh, good. Hey, Miss Madeline. Hi. Hey, Amy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here. I'm in finally. My God. Yeah. How are you? Amy just stepped out, but I'm having a sneeze oh. fit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. What am I looking for? Okay, here we go. So is that Corey? That is Did Corey. Just... Hi, Corey. It's so good to meet you. We can't hear you, Corey. Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking. How about now? Now we can hear you, and we can see you, Madeline. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, great. Okay, so it looks like the one on the public link is working now. Awesome sauce. Amy, you know I thought it was all me. I know. I, I thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This time it wasn't. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. My confidence is just not there yet. I, I'm working on it. Hey, Milan. Hi, Miss Madeline. It's good to see Hi. you. It's good to see you and everyone else. Looks like we're getting everybody in, in spite of ourselves. We got this. We do. Or I should say, you got this. I'm doing nothing. I'm just sitting here enjoying it. You're right. looking good. How's your cooking? Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Corey. I'm just here to be pretty. Uh. Nailing it. Hello, everyone. This is Jason. Hi, Jason. So fun. First faces. All right. Our first poll. Oh, and um, Corey, will you be able to monitor the Q&A tonight? Okay, awesome, thanks. Just wanted to check before we dove in. My golly. I think we're almost there. Looks like we need Sam. And Sarah. Um, kicked 1974. Um, could you just type in your name in the chat so we know if you're a panelist that we need to promote? Or if you are a member of the community, that would be good to know as well. Should I be a panelist? Yep. yep, you're exactly oh. where you need to be, Madeline. Okay, great. All right, I'm thinking it's not one of our panelists because I think the only person is Sarah. Hi, Sam, thanks for joining us. Are you home yet? I'm in Virginia. Still in Virginia. Virginia. Oh, oh, wow. Good for you. Oh, my God. Well, 631 and with quorum, um, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, welcome, everyone. Hi. This is so exciting. Um, it's so good to have a full uh, present group again as a panel, and I'm so excited to have you all here. Um, to get us started, just some uh, housekeeping items for uh, um, tonight's meeting. Of uh, First things first, uh, for members of the public, if you have uh, questions or feedback during the meeting, please use the Q&A function of the Zoom call. Uh, Corey is going to be monitoring that tonight. Uh, please do not use the chat. Uh, panelists, that also goes for us as well. If you have something you want to communicate with the group, please do so um, through the video call that's being recorded. Uh, don't use the chat. We just it, we just find that we tend to lose things there. However, if you do need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a panelist or to poke me about something in the meeting, if I've, if I've skipped something, whatever it might be, feel free to use the chat for one-on-one -on -one combos. Um, but for any, anything for the group or anything two or more of us, let's keep that um, in the meeting with everyone. Um, also, panelists, uh, as much as we can this evening, it's important to keep our cameras on, especially when we're voting, so that we can verify that we are the person voting, we are the one present for the meeting. Um, I also appreciate y'all have um, included your names, your full names, um, in your 
uh, your uh, profile as well. That's also important for any members of the media so that they um, can identify us. And I encourage you to make sure you're using a name that you would like to see appear uh, in the Daily Camera or the Denver Post or whatever it may be, because um, uh, that's frequently what they use. Um, cool. We are recording. Boom. Uh, Corey's taking minutes. Boom, shakalaka. We are ready to go. Um, so we'll go ahead and kick off the meeting by with a reading of our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the Arapaho, Ute, and Cheyenne tribes, the traditional custodians of the land on which the police oversight panel and the Boulder Police Department operate, and we pay our respects to their elders, past and present. Um, again, welcome uh, all panelists. Thank you for being here and making the time. Uh, members of the community, Welcome as well. We are so excited to, and happy to have you here and part of this process. Sorry, I'm skipping through my notes. Oh, right, uh, members of the public as well. Uh, if you have uh, a complaint against an officer of the police department that you would like to submit, or else if you would like to contact the police oversight plan panel, our web address is bouldercolorado.gov forward slash services forward slash police hyphen oversight. And our panel email, which is maintained by the co-chairs of this panel, is policeoversightpanel at bouldercolorado.gov. Next up, I'm going to read through our agenda this evening. We're going to start by approving the February 8 meeting minutes. Then we're going to go around and introduce all of our new BPOP members. Then we're going to introduce Farah, our new city consultant. Next, we're going to need to select our co-chairs for the panel to serve for the next year. Then we're going to have a conversation about training for the panel. We will also have a conversation about uh, our committee staffing and making sure all of our panelists have identified a committee they'd like to serve on. Then we will get our report from the interim police monitor. The police panel will select our uh, community complaint cases for full review. And then members of the community, we will have public comment at the end of this meeting. Um, and that's that. So to kick us off, for approval of the February minutes, does anyone have any, um, do we need to make any, or, uh, any changes to the minutes before we approve? Just opening the floor for that. Great. If not, could I get a motion to approve the February 8th meeting minutes? Motion to approve. Thanks, Sarah. Could I get a second? Thank you, Hadassah. Uh, oh, oh, I should mention, yeah, so new panelists, uh, we vote either verbally or with a show of a hand works as well. Um, so thank you, Hadassah, for a second. And all panelists, show of hands, uh, approval of the February 8th meeting minutes. Thank you very much. The yeas have it. So approved. And now let's jump into introducing our new panel members. And I'd also like to um, uh, independent monitor city staff, let's also introduce you as well. So we'll all go around and do full introductions. Um, and I'll go ahead and kick that off. Hi, y'all. I'm Daniel Leonard, uh, pronouns he, him. Um, and I am a current co-chair uh, on the Boulder Police Oversight Panel. I've been serving on the panel for two years now. Uh, I currently work for the University of Colorado Boulder, and I live up in Longmont. And I will hand it over to my left, Hadassah. Thanks, Daniel. Um, I'm Hadassah Villalobos, uh, she, her, uh, current panelist, been here for two years. I'm, also, I'm an interim co-chair with Daniel, um, just to fill the gap here for us um, and uh, on governance legacy committees and in the daytime I do uh, quality compliance a local food manufacturer and next to me I have Amy my left she her and hers and I'm the equity officer for the city of Boulder and stepping in to help out So I will call on Corey. I'm Corey Vasquez. I'm an administrative admin in the city manager's office. Um, so anything you need, um, apparently not technical wise, but let me know. So 
this passing thing isn't going well. Um, my Lynn. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm, my name is Milan Villard. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a new panelist. Um, and um, during the day, I'm a freelance translator, and I'm also a member of Boulder showing up for racial justice research. And I'll pass it on to Farah. Do you want me to go or do you want me to pass it on to a new panelist? <laughs> I want to check the order. Go ahead and pass it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pass it to a new. Will you pass it to a new panelist, Daniel, for me? On it. Yeah. Sam, why don't you go next? All right. Nice to meet you all again. Hopefully, I can meet you all in person soon. Sam, he, him. I'm a PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder um, in applied math. Um, uh, and I'm the treasurer of our union, um, uh, CWA Local 7799, which contains United Campus Workers Colorado, the union for the CU workers, as well as um, many other public uh, sector unions in Colorado, including DUC, the Defenders United of uh, Defenders Union of Colorado, the public defenders. All right, um, I will pass it to Victor. Thanks, Sam. Um, and hi, Martha. I see you in the audience. My name is Victor. I'm a pronouns are he, him. I'm a founding member of the police oversight panel. I also sit on the communications committee and I'm a recovery coach manager at mental health partners for the state stimulant and opioid response grant. And I'll pick Madeline. Hi, I'm Madeline Strong Woodley. I am uh, one of the original uh, members of the oversight, which was started out being a task force as of March 1st of, uh, I think it was 2019. And uh, then from that to the implementation team, and then we created the ordinance and everything else. And, and so I just decided that I would join at this level uh, since I was on the original end and understand the who, when, where, how, and why of it. Maybe I can offer something that'll give insight from this side of the house. And uh, thank you. Oh, Don, do you want to go next? Oh, I was supposed to pass it, wasn't I? Sorry. No worries. We'll get there. We got this. <laughs> Sorry. How about Michael? Well, hello everyone, good evening. My name is Michael Janako and I'm part of the interim monitor team, um, headed uh, uh, doing most of the laboring war is um, Flo, Flo Finkel, who is here from in a minute, um, but it's great to see a lot of new faces and uh, get reacquainted with folks that I've gotten to know at least for a few months. I'll pass it to Flo. Flo. Thanks, Mike. Uh, my name is Florence Finkel. Everyone calls me Flo. I've been uh, working um, for Mike and OIR group uh, as your interim monitor uh, since approximately October 1st, 2022. Uh, it looks like I'll be, we'll be here for a few more months. And I'm um, looking forward to meeting all of you and working with you in person. I will be in Boulder the week weekend of uh, March 18th to conduct a training. Um, I'm going to pass it to um, Jason. Uh, my name is Jason Savala. I am a, 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 an attorney in town. I have had a practice here for about 20 years. And um, I represent individuals rather than corporations or governments and primarily do criminal defense. Um, I, a uh, long, long time ago, I ran for DA and, and I, I'm not, well, it was an interesting thing, but I, I didn't do very well. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I've been interested in the subject for a long, long time and, um, and I'm happy to be here and I look forward to learning from you guys and, and seeing what we can do uh, to better things. Um, not quite sure who hasn't gone, but uh, Soledad, have you gone? Uh, 
Nope, but I can go now. So um, hello, everyone. My name is Soledad Diaz. I use she, her, her pronouns. Um, and I'm, what can I say? I work for SPAN. I'm the shelter program director there. I'm also a part of the Downtown Boulder Community Initiative Board and the Community Advisory Board. So super happy to be part of this group. Uh, and I think it's Lisa should go now. Thanks, Soledad. Hi, everyone. It was so nice to meet so many of you this weekend. Lisa Sweeney Moran, she, her. I am the executive director of Mother House and the Lodge, which are two homeless shelters here in Boulder. I also serve as the vice president of the Boulder Valley School Board, and I have two little kids, which is my most important and favorite job. And I think the only one, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't heard from yet is Sterling. Sterling, Sterling, are you there? Oh, there he is. Hello, yeah. my name is Sterling Eckwell. Can you guys see me? You're you're breaking up a bit for us. I'm sorry. I'm in my car right now. I went to the Muni building or to the Penfield Tate building, and I said the meeting was moved somewhere else. So I'm not sure uh, where the actual physical location is. So I'm in my car. Oh, um, we're just holding them virtually, Sterling. I'm sorry about that. Okay. So my my fault for that. Anyway, my name is Sterling. I'm a police officer. Uh, I am a uh, detective sergeant. I'm in detectives. I've been with the Boulder Police Department for 20 years. And uh, like I said, I'm currently assigned to the um, detective division. Um, I've been in Boulder since uh, 1998. Since when I started to go to school at CU, graduated in 2002, and then got hired right after that. That's me. Thanks, y'all. And Ster Sterling, sincere apologies for that. Uh, nope, it's my that's um, So next, uh, our, our last person to introduce, I'll hand it over to Amy uh, to introduce Farah and our, our new initiative. Um, it's with extreme gratitude that I have the opportunity to introduce our friend and colleague, Farah Muscadin, who is going to be helping as our consultant um, with a lot of different things, aspects um, on the panel support side while we are still looking for our next independent monitor. And with that, Farah, I'm gonna turn it over to you so you can tell the team a little bit about who you are and what you're gonna be working on. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Farah Muscadin. I um, am an attorney by trade, um, but I most recently was the police monitor for the city of Austin Office of Police Oversight. And I worked there pretty much transforming the office. And I also was the direct liaison to their panel. Um, I'm really passionate about police oversight. I really love it. Um, I know it's hard, um, but it is rewarding and can be rewarding. Um, and so I'm looking forward to working with the panel directly on the ordinance changes, um, working on some of your training and really just helping guide, you know, a little bit of your direction and be as a resource to you guys um, in really setting a stronger foundation as you move forward. I know it's hard in the beginning. It's only been two years and it will be bumpy, but I can promise you that you will get through the bumps um, and it'll be worth it. So thank you again for the opportunity to work with you. I'm very sincerely excited um, and happy to be a resource and a collaborator collaborator with you. Thank you, Farah. Yeah, su super excited. So grateful to have you part of this process. Um, and for members of the public who are interested, we are still uh, looking for our next uh, monitor for the, the for the panel panel as well. Um, so more changes to come. So moving right along through our agenda, next up uh, panel is our first big decision, and this is about co-chair selection. Um, and so, excuse me, uh, my term, uh, my first year term as a co-chair uh, uh, has come to an end. Ariel Amaru uh, served with me uh, till the end of that. As Hadassah mentioned, she is serving as interim chair up till today. So today we actually need to nominate and vote for two new co-chairs to serve for the next year. Um, and so before we jumped into that, jump into that, I just want to recap a little bit of what we talked about on Sunday. So the co-chair's position um, is to run these meetings, um, to be the main spokesperson 
uh, spokespersons for the panel uh, and to work with the monitor and city staff to make sure that um, everyone here is getting what they need, the resources they need um, to accomplish this work. Um, and then we also serve you know, that important role of morale and accountability on the panel. And so it's the co-chair's job, you know, if, um, if for whatever reason a, a panel isn't following through on their, co their commitment to follow up, to find out why, to find a solution to move forward there. Um, and also to be a resource for panelists to maintain morale. This is this is challenging work, um, and and sometimes that phone call uh, with a co-chair and a panelist is really critical to keep someone engaged um, and, and and moving through this process. And so that's at least two extra meetings um, each week. The co-chairs meet with the monitor and city staff before and after these general monthly meetings. Um, that also includes though meetings with other committee chairs. Uh, potential media interviews as they come up as spokespersons, uh, outreach to the community. We expect the co-chairs co uh, to be at a, uh, our outreach events, to be the face of the panel um, as spokespersons. Ooh, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Please excuse my, my coughing and, and such. Um, and so it's also about, it, it is a, an additional time commitment as well on top of the work. The co-chairs, of course, still review cases, still serve on committees. So co-chairs duties are, are on top of that. For full disclosure, that also means the stipends for co-chairs increased to $250. So, so each panelist get a $200 a month stipend. Uh, co-chairs get a $250 stipend to make up that difference. And in any given month, that's, you know, it, it is 10 to 15 hours of extra work. Uh, Co-chairs do need to be checking their emails daily. Uh, things can develop quickly. The monitor in a, um, an emergency situation or in a situation of needing to confer confidential information will usually reach out to the co-chairs first. So it's important for them to be present for those, um, uh, um, for those encounters. So that being said, um, I'd like to open up the floor just in case there's any questions about the co-chairs positions um, before we get into discussion about um, who uh, who we'd like to serve as our co-chairs going forward. Oh, and I was going to that was the last thing. And co-chairs can serve two consecutive terms. They do need to be re-elected. Um, so I so I can I have the option to serve one more term, one more year um, if nominated and elected. Um, so you can serve a total of two years or serve one year and, and duck out if you'd like. Um, and as for, so we're about to have our first discussion on Zoom, which can be um, challenging. And so it's, uh, so it's my job to make sure everyone is able to, to get their voice in in the conversation. So if we can, because there's so many of us, if we could please use the hands, hands raised um, icon or just put your hand up uh, in front of the screen. That also works well. I'll call on us uh, uh, as we go, just so we're not talking on top of each other or interrupting. Um, so with that, does anyone have any questions about the co-chair's position um, that I can answer? I'll just give it a second, because that's a lot. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, is the stipend amount set by us, or is that like a city ordinance? Because hearing the 10 to 15 extra hours a week, or month, week or month, for $50 a month, that the math doesn't really work out, right? Yeah, no, yeah, it's definitely stipend. That's not hourly adjusted. Um, but to your to your question, um, that is set by city council. So we actually inc we went to city council last year and asked them to increase. So it started when the panel was founded. It started with a hundred dollars for each member, and it quickly became apparent that was not supporting panelists' needs. You know, for childcare, for family care, for transportation for computers, wireless to make this work happen. And so we went to council and up that to 200 and then 250 for the co-chairs. But your point is well taken, not adjusted for hourly rate. And that's something we can definitely talk about in the future. You know, that's a that's something we can take back to council if we'd like at some point. Um, yeah, because this is important work and it is, and I, I wanna, I wanna highlight that too, that, you know, it, it, we're taking that time out of our lives to do this. We are community volunteers. But it's important for the accessibility of this panel that we are helping people financially to to um, to take this opportunity. So, yeah. Any other questions about co-chairs that I can answer? Just give it a second.
Okie dokie. In that case, um, next up then. So if we just want to, so the way we've done this in the past um, for nominating core chairs is just going around and su see who's feeling that they have the, the, the bandwidth to step up and the interest to step up um, into the co-chair positions. And so this is just an opportunity to voice um, if, if you are interested, um, and also the opportunity to say, to be blunt and say, Hey, you know what? I, I, I feel like I don't have time. Um, I, I won't, um, and, and wouldn't like to serve this time. I will note, we are still a small enough pad panel that with these terms for co-chairs, most of us will be called upon at some point to serve as co-chairs as, as on this panel. Um, so the opportunities will certainly present itself. And so, yeah, if we just want to go around and, um, yeah, how are you all feeling? Do you feel you have the bandwidth and are you interested in serving as co-chair of police oversight panel? Yeah, Jason, I see the hand. Um, I, I want to start it off by saying, one, I don't think I know enough to do it. And two, um, I, I honestly am very busy right now. I, I, I It took me effort to get to this meeting. And um, so I'm a little bit worried about that, but I, I do want to support and, and do everything I can for the group. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, yeah Corey, I see the hand. I, Martha Wilson would like you to know that she's pretty sure that you assume someone else's term. So you may be eligible for two of your own. Thank you, Martha. Uh, I looked into this. Uh, I can only serve one more year. I cannot serve two more years, <laughs> uh, but I adore you. Thank you for being here. Um, yes, but that's true. I did assume uh, um, as Susie's term, so I served out Susie's term and then started my one-year term, uh, which I completed in February. Um, so I, I, I have one more, one more term, and I and I will mention. Um, yes, I if um, if nominated, I I would be happy to serve one more year. I recognize the value of continuity too. Um, of having a, a co-chair continue, uh, especially since there's a, so much transition happening now with the new monitor, um, with new panelists. And so, yeah, if nominated, I would would be interested and would make the bandwidth to continue serving. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Other, other thoughts? Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Martha. Thank you, Corey. Um, anyone else? What are you thinking? Yeah, Lisa. Hey. Hi. Uh, yeah, I think your point is well taken that we'll probably all cycle through this. Um, I would be delighted, Daniel, to support you and another member of the POP that have been doing this for a while already. But if there isn't somebody else who wants to step up, I'd be happy to partner with you this year. Thanks, Lisa. Others. Just give it a moment. Yeah, Hadassah, hey. Hello. Um, yeah, just just saying I I it, it, it's a little terrifying because I know the amount of work that it is. Um, but but yeah, I think I could I definitely could have the the bandwidth if we um would like. I am I'm open to uh supporting however we need. So Thanks, Adasa. Yes. Yeah, Lisa, I see the hand. I would be delighted to support Hadassah in that case. Yeah, Victor. Um, I've seen um, all the work and stuff this position entails, and I've mentioned in the last meeting, um, but I do not have the bandwidth um, for this position. Thanks, Victor. Milan? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna not offer my services for this position right now. I feel I have a lot to learn um, and my work comes and goes. And so being available at this point, it is not possible, but I really am looking forward to watching some pros doing it and learning from from you. Thank you. Thanks, Milan. And I will I will do I, I will live up to that pro uh, as much as I can, at least in tonight's meeting. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Anyone else? Yeah, Sam, I see it. Yeah. Um, in addition to saying what most other people are saying, that I don't have the bandwidth for this at the moment. And as a new pop member, I'd like to support the uh, people who have been around for a year to uh, be the co-chairs this time. I also want to express my gratitude for the prior pop members for supporting us through the contentious nomination process, right? There are clearly people in the community who feel threatened by sort of critical and neutral um, uh, examination of, uh, of the police. And yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to you all and I, I support your nomination. Thanks, Sam. Final thoughts. Okie dokie. So in that case, it sounds like, um, so we have, we have myself, um, Hadassah. Uh, Lisa, just clarifying, do, do you wanna, do you wanna keep your hat in the ring? Okay, I was I just just double check. No, I'm delighted to support the two of you. It felt like no one was speaking, so I wanted to jump in. But hearing Hadassah do, I'm really excited from what I've seen in past meetings for the two of you to lead us through this next year. Truly appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, Jason, I see the hand. Um, and maybe I missed it, Daniel. But uh, are you interested in sticking around? I I am. I I'd be happy to. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, since um, so we'll go one by one with these votes. Um, and so what 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 we need first <laughs> is for someone to put forward a motion to um, to elect Hadassah, a co chair of the police oversight panel. So I will make that motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. I saw Tully Dot first. So rest of you panelists hands in the air. Uh, vote to approve Hadassah as a co-chair of the police oversight panel. All in favor? One, two, three, and the yeas have it. Thank you. Hadassah is a co-chair of the, over, uh, the police oversight panel. Um, and now next, um, I cannot make a motion for myself. So if, if there's a motion uh, to, for me, yeah. Motion for Daniel. <laughs> If I could get a second, thanks, Jason. Uh, so panelists, hands in the air to appoint myself to the co-chair. Fabulous. Okay, Hobie Ho. Uh, in that case, um, oh, I look. Oh, I so look forward to working with you, Hadassah. I so look forward to working with you all. Um, thank you. That it really means a lot to me as well. Uh, thank you. Um, so without further ado, let us move on to our conversation about BPOP training. Uh, so um, I wanna do a quick recap. Uh, so members of the community, uh, the panel assembled uh, this past Sunday for our orientation as new panelists and uh, new panelists, past pa panelists, uh, Farrah were present for that. Um, Amy, uh, Amy was also there and we had representation from the city attorney's office and HR to give us the lowdown on being panelists. And so just a quick re recap for members of the public. This was discussions about how we use our email, how we access care cases and SharePoint. Um, we did a brief overview of our bylaws as well as got initial legal training on how we should operate as a panel, how we hold public meetings, um, how we handle confidential information, um, the Colorado Open Records Act. So it was a lot of information. Um, there's a lot more to come in that process, of course, as well. And, and that is our next conversation. So <clears throat> our next training is March 18th, and that's going to be coming from the OIR group, uh, Flo and Michael. Uh, and that will be uh, specifically on the complaint and disciplinary process of our work. And so that's the the real foundation of our work here. And so that's really important. Um, and Flo, you're flying out for that, correct? So we'll have you in person. I am flying out for that. I should be over my COVID by then. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Flo. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope that, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Um, but I look forward to see you March 18th, uh, Flo in real life. Uh, and that'll be great. 
Uh, and then uh, we will, that will also include the, uh, the March 18th training will also include uh, the role of the, the Boulder Police Department Professional Standards Unit. Uh, we refer to them as the PSU frequently. Uh, and that will come from Sergeant Alistair McNiven, who also joined us on Sunday and gave us uh, a, a brief preview of more training to come. Uh, what we also wanted to discuss today, so panelists, you were, sh uh, we shared with you in advance the, um, the training modules document. Um, and so this was presented, I believe that was our October meeting, we presented this, uh, this module of training to the public and to current members of the panelists to outline how we wanted to move forward with trainings. And at that meeting, we approved the March 5th training and the uh, um, the March 18th meeting training, but as you can see, there are several modules to come that we thought were important. So the current panelists thought were important to include. They have not been scheduled yet. And so what I wanted to make time for today is a quick conversation about um, if there's particular modules that we feel should be added to this list, if there's any questions or clarifications needed on the substance of those modules, and then if we also want, and then we want to end this um, with a vote on um, getting our next module scheduled, of asking staff to get those scheduled with us. Um, and so that is our current task. So I'm going to open it first just for questions. Does anyone have questions about the training modules um, that were shared with us? Training on the training modules. That's what we're doing now. Yeah, Lisa. I didn't the question, but I did mention over the weekend, um, hoping we could do some training on some of the union questions. And I know Alistair had volunteered just to do a one-on-one, -on -one, and I wasn't really sure what the preference was, whether we were trying to make that happen for all of us or whether I should just get in touch with him. Thank you for raising that, Lisa. And I think that actually goes back to... Um, uh, we had previously asked as a panel for a meeting, uh, at least a meeting, but even a training with the, I think the title is um, the the Boulder chapter president or our, our Boulder representative um, of the union as well to talk to them. We met them briefly, but I think that would be an important opportunity um, to, to, as well. Um, and so maybe that's just a motion. Um, Actually, let's just go for it. Lisa, do you want to make a motion to add a police union training to our um, training modules? Uh, so moved. I don't think I can add to that. <laughs> I'll second that. Panelists, all in favor of adding a police union training to this mod to our module schedule? Fabulous. The yeas have it. Um, so we'll add that to the list. Um, and uh, let's follow up, Amy, I'll follow up with you about flushing out the details of that and I'll, so we can get a full proposal in. Um, but Lisa, yeah, thank you for raising that again. I think yeah. the more specific we can request, the better. Are you asking for that now or is there a better way for us each to share questions that we might have? Yeah, if you wanna just, Daniel. Perfect, let's just do it yeah. now. Um, let's get, um, well, I think it'll take a little bit longer than just a second because people need a little soak time, maybe I see think about portions of the contract that they might want to review. Um, so maybe what we could do is I could send the contract to everybody and you could kind of peruse it and see if there's certain aspects that you'd like more clarity on that way we can bring them in maybe while we're doing one of the other trainings and tag on to that. Got it. That Thank sound you. like a I think that makes sense. That's yeah, we want, to, we want to review the contract and then all of us can submit what we want to get out of that training. That'd be helpful. Yeah. Lisa, do you, does that work for you? Totally. And then I think generally the question that I had on Sunday and that I still have is just about the way the police union intersects with the work we do, intersects with the work the Office of Professional Responsibility does, and how all of those things, the sort of push and pull and where authority lies in different situations. Cool. But yes, I would love to look at the contract and ask even more questions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Milan, I saw your hand. Yeah. 
there was uh, about another uh, training that's on the on the proposal, and um, I would like to have more information about the training on how the BPD trains its officers on values and ethics. Um, wondering also about biases and um, and so I would like to have more information on that um, if possible. Thank you. And actually, maybe that's a question, Amy. Is the is the city still working through um, the bias training that Joey Lapari was leading with BPD? Policy advisor. She has been working with a departmental um, equity ambassador team, and they just did some sessions. I think it was in October. Um, and we're working to get more on the calendar um, for the new recruits and then for like the 30 so officers who haven't yet gone through that. So we're hoping to launch those talking about potentially August um, before students come back into town and, and they get busy with other trainings. So that is on the, on the deck. Got it. And so maybe that's then if we would they be the ones who would be most appropriate to yeah, we could probably see if um, Ana Silvia, our equity policy advisor, um, and then the couple of the equity ambassadors um, want to do something, talk about what that is. Yeah, Milan, I see your hand. Yeah, yeah Milan. I'm wondering also if we could sit during the training and observe, uh, would that be a possibility? We can check. Usually we ask people to participate rather than observe and our bias and microaggression work. Thank you. Yeah, I think that would... So let, uh, Milan, do you want to put forward a motion then to add that training to our to our training schedule? Yeah, so moved. Um, so do I second. have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, panelists, show of hands, all in favor for adding an ethics and values and bias training to our schedule? <laughs> I'm going to add two in that, that we're going to also stretch the time out a little bit with all of these different trainings. So we don't front load everything at the beginning. So we'll work with the co-chairs to kind of space out. Um, so it's not that every Saturday or at once a month, we're having to call everybody in or every Sunday or something like that. Absolutely, Amy. And I think um, maybe a way to move forward with that to panelists is is if we want to tonight to identify the next training that we want to get scheduled um, so that we can start working on that and finding a time um, and work through it that way um, to set our priorities as we go, if that makes sense to everyone. But open, open, opening the floor for anyone who who's, has thoughts otherwise, yeah. Other questions, feedback? Yeah, Soledad. Um, I might have misunderstood, but I I understood that uh, Milan was asking about if uh, the police was receiving those training or, or if we are getting the training. I think those are two different things. Um, so, and also I understood that her question was around participating as observing those trainings rather than being trained on it so if that is what i understood like maybe we need to clear this up and if i misunderstood then i need to be clear no that's my understanding too milan is that that correct we want to we want a training on how bpd officers are trained on values ethics and bias uh, yes i would like to be able to observe how they are trained and um how it's conducted and and all that um rather than being a participant. I, I'm, I'm okay also being a participant, but that would be two different things, I think. And so that's something we can explore and then, yeah, explore and bring back the details on. Amy, yeah, I saw you mm -hmm. up there. Oh, okay, Good. okay. Yeah, so so just, just so we're clear, so we're voting for both. So also the panel receive a training on bias and microaggression, no? Okay. You're, we, we wouldn't have you just observe somebody getting a bias and microaggression workshop. If you want to learn what the workshop looks like, we can absolutely do that. If the request is to observe, we're going to rope you in to participate. Okay, great. Yeah. That's one of the clear. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for that.
If there's any other questions, feedback. Yeah, Jason. Um, you know, I, I we have somebody from the police department here, uh, Detective Equo, and and I, I'm curious what he thinks are maybe the um, some of the challenges that might uh, be between us and some of the things we just uh, suggested. If you're uh, if you're ready to talk about that, but maybe we can talk about it another time. But I, I'm just curious if you have something to add. I don't think there'd be any challenges in terms of uh, the the training part, um, the ethics and bias um, training that the city put on for all employees to go through. Um, I do agree with Amy. It'd be probably be be more beneficial if it was um, as a participant as opposed to just observing it. Um, I, I don't know what you would get out of observing it, observing it as opposed to. I think you just get a lot more out of, out of participating in it as opposed to just observing it. Um, was there any, another training? Was that the only question? Thank you. Thanks, Sterling. Yeah. I want to lift up to one of the training modules on here is also um, the opportunity to do a ride along uh, with an officer of the department and maybe Amy can I hand that over to you to give a little bit a little back a little bit more background on that and how panelists can start to schedule those. And we can work directly with Sergeant McNiven. Um, to get those scheduled for what works with your schedules. Um, in the police oversight world, it's been found to be very beneficial for police pa oversight panelists to participate in a ride along um, so they can really start to learn um, the equipment that's being used, get a feel for what it looks like on that side, understand more about the body cam cameras and how they work, uh, the laptops that they're utilizing, how they get calls, um, what areas of town that they are. Um, ex, you know, putting out on patrol. Um, so I know that when Farah was here, she did a ride along um, while she was here. So Farah, I don't know if you have anything to add. No, I would just say that I, I do recommend it. Um, I did go on one on Monday um, for a couple hours with an officer. Um, I, I found it very interesting. I, um, when I was with the city of Austin, I went about, I did about 10 and various shifts. Um, I did it over midnight in the um, the entertainment district. And I found it as an opportunity to have a more um, direct conversation with officers, really see um, their interactions with the public. Um, I, I do find it fascinating, all the equipment and understanding that. I went through a whole tutorial about the weapons that they carry, not only on them, but in the cars. Um, all of that is very key information. Um, and then just also seeing the response to calls. So I, in Austin, not, not um, on Monday, I um, was present for domestic violence calls. Um, I was present for, um, it was actually a sexual assault in progress. Um, that was probably the most serious call I, I um, witnessed. Um, and I also witnessed, um, they were picking somebody up who had an outstanding warrant, and it was somebody who was designated as um, having a history of mental health. So it's really interesting to see how they processed th th that um, that incident. Um, and so I, I do recommend it. Lord knows you don't need ten, um, but um, uh, I think going on a couple, particularly a Friday, Saturday evening, you don't even necessarily have to do the whole shift. I've always done the whole shift, but obviously my role was different. Um, but I do think that there's definitely um, a significant benefit from just seeing that perspective and also just the one-on-one -on -one time with the officer. Um, all the officers I've been on a ride on with were very candid and I've rode with both men and women and that perspective is actually quite different um, to be able to ride with both the genders if possible. That's great. So I will send that information out to everybody or have asked Corey to send that information out so you all can start getting that scheduled. Thanks, Amy. And thanks, Farah. Yeah. And reiterating too, um, so this was a training um, opportunity made available to the panelists, the first panel as well. Um, and, and underlining uh, 
all of our other trainings are required, right? They're re we're required to do our work. The, um, the ride along is not a required training. We recognize that that may be um, a particularly uncomfortable or traumatic experience for panelists. Um, I'd also encourage panelists, if you, you know, if you're on the fence about that, to reach out to Amy, uh, you know, to have that conversation as well. So how, how could we make that experience both comfortable and safe for you if that's an opportunity you want to take advantage of? Yeah, Soledad. Uh, just a quick kind of housekeeping question, but I understand that when you do a ride along, you have to sign um, a release of liability. And I'm wondering if us as member of the panel are covered for by some sort of insurance or we do need to do a release of liability to ride along. Just because for those of us who have children. <laughs> for sure <laughs> yeah thank you both yeah yeah sam a really simple thing that could make ride-alongs feel safer for us is if we were allowed to go in pairs just because at least for me it feels like having been kind of singled out by the police chief it doesn't feel very friendly to sit in a car with the police officer for a few hours like i don't know like there could be like weird uh, aggression or anything and it would just be like my word versus theirs you know and that would be very uncomfortable whereas if there were two panel members I think the police officer would be forced to be a bit more professional even if like you know they they would be anyway it, it would at least guarantee another witness for whatever happens in the car yeah Farah I was just gonna add I do think that's a great idea but there's I think a technical issue with that only that um, I don't think you're going to be allowed to sit in the back seat in case you witness an incident and they arrest somebody. Um, but I don't know, um, Sterling, if there's like a walking beat, perhaps maybe doing a walking beat, you could do that in pairs, because I think those are also just as beneficial um, as also being in the car. Yeah, there are. Um, we do have like a, our downtown uh, mall team who uh, it kind of depends on the weather and the, the calls are going to, but they can I spend a lot of time just out on foot walking the Pearl Street Mall. That'd be the, the most applicable thing. The only other thing that I would uh, say might be difficult about having um, people in pairs is that as the as the officer who's um, conducting the ride along, the uh, the rider is kind of their responsibility. So if they if they're if you're going to calls that kind of get more dangerous, then you're, that's just another person that you have to worry about and try to make sure that person stays safe. So that'll be my only, um, you know, just initially think about this, uh, and my only real concern about having to keep an, like another person safe, worry about two people as opposed to one. So that's my thought. But yeah, there is a possibility that they can meet just down the mall and walk with the uh, walk with officers for a couple hours. But again, that kind of depends on the calls that are going on and the weather, obviously. Thanks, Sterling. Yeah. And that's to iterate too. You know, we've talked about in the past, um, particularly the, through the Community Engagement Committee, about finding opportunities for the panel to um, to interact with police officers, you know, out, uh, in other venues, whether that's, I think it's called Coffee, coffee with a Cop, or um, if there's police trainings that we could go, uh, we could join in as well as panelists or social. So those kinds of opportunities too, I think we should continue to look for with the department um, as well. Yes, for, you know, Sam, finding those group settings in particular. Yeah, Soledad, I see you. Uh, sorry, but I, I'll be happy to go with Sam and maybe Sterling, I know that I, I have done this, that's why I'm just jumping in, but uh, maybe a tour, in the building and you get comfortable little by little uh i would love to go with you if you want company and maybe we can set up a tour um and then you think about the ride along if that works i'm happy to to support you thank you that's um... and we we're invited ourselves to the police department by the way sterling is that possible <laughs> Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it, if you guys want to set up a tour, feel free to um, reach out to me or um, Sergeant McNiven or whoever you feel most comfortable with to try to set up a tour. I'm happy to uh, walk walk anybody around the building and just show them uh, the day to day operations here. Thank you, Sterling. Yeah. 
And I'll say too that Bethany has been great about sending out the invites for um, like the promotion ceremonies and when they swear in new officers. So we'll just ask her to keep those coming and I'll keep forwarding those on as well. Fantastic, Corey. Yeah, I think it's, you know, any opportunity where we can join in that that, that would be great to know. Yeah, Victor, I see you. Yep, I would just say just to the new panelists, um, there's a lot of like getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. I remember when our first meetings and the chief walks in a full uniform and sidearm and we're just like, whoa, we're here. Um, so some of that may be a little shock, but, um, you know, I remember when we did that use of force training um, at the department out there. And so that that was really good. But I also say with the tour, you know, the department has a lot of uh, civilian employees. And so how do these interact? We get complaints about these non-civilian employees. So seeing what the dispatch center looks like, what the traffic center, um, the other the other areas, um, you know, is important as well, just for that understanding. So when these complaints come in later, we can kind of understand just that sort of chain of command with the civilian and non-civilian employees. Thanks, Victor. Yeah. Any other final thoughts with um, ride alongs, other interactions with police department officers? Great, so in uh, mindful of the time, what I'd like to do next is for us to identify um, at least the next one, maybe even in the next two trainings, we'd like to ask Amy to begin um, scheduling for us. Uh, we had put at the top of this list last fall, um, the, sorry, my scroll is not working. There we go. Yeah, uh, the civilian oversight um, primer, uh, which would come to us through the OIR group. Um, and conscious of, of time as well as eventually we will get a new monitor. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, the OIR group uh, is with us to do that training. Um, and so what I'd like to do um, is, is raise the question. Yeah, Amy, I see you. On that training, is that true, Farah? Yeah, okay. Fabulous, perfect. So in that case, yeah, so um, Farah and Flo, um, and the OIR group. No, nope. wait, Mike. Um, Mike, Mike, and uh, yeah. So Mike and Farah on, on the primer for, for civilian oversight. Yeah, Hadassah, I see ya. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a great next one. Um, and I wonder if, depending on what we want to book, um, if we want to book that together with the principles of accountability. Ooh, I really like that. And so that would be about a three hour training altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really like that idea. Other thoughts, panelists? Mike and Farrah, does that work for you? Cool beans. Um, without further discussion, yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion then. So move to, um, schedule our civilian oversight of law enforcement primer together with the principles of accountability trainings. Uh, is there a second for that? Thanks, Milan, I see ya. So panelists all in favor, hands up. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's the majority. So we will go ahead and move forward with that then. Um, great. Any final thoughts with training modules? Fantastic, so we'll start working through those. It is 727, um, so why don't we go ahead and take our five minute break to be human beings um, uh, off camera for a second. So uh, panelists, staff, everyone, let's uh, rejoin at 733.
Okay, everyone, it is 7.33. We are back. We'll give Flo just a second, Flo and Lisa. Okay. So next up, panelists, uh, is our committee staffing. And I'm just I'm going to preface this. This is a big meeting for us. There's a lot to do. So thank you all for your energy and patience. There's so much for us to do. Uh, we've, been, we've been so excited to get all the new members here. So we saved all this work for you. <laughs> um, so our next up is uh, committees. So uh, the Police Oversight Panel has three committees, Community Engagement and Communications Committee, uh, which is charged with uh, all of our community outreach and working with the co-chairs on our media relations, media relations and communications. Uh, then we have the governance committee, which is currently chaired by one Hadassah. Uh, Hadassah, do you want to introduce your committee? Sure. Um, so governance is pretty much uh, in charge of our direct responsibility is writing the bylaws, updating that because we have power over that. Um, and then we were also sort of kind of being this like catch all for any other um, potential like legal updates. So if we wanted to promote uh, propose amendments for either the ordinance or state laws or city laws or anything like that, um, that would be kind of that together, maybe with community engagement, you know, kind of get everybody together, but kind of be a rallying point of potential, you know, putting those together and proposing changes. So that's all. <laughs> Thanks, Sadasa. Mm -hmm. And then our third committee is the Legacy Committee, which is, so in our ordinance, our two primary responsibilities are one, case reviews, but two, um, looking into the data, you know, digging into the trends and the history of policing in our community so that it can help us inform our future and inform our policy recommendations and our work with the police department. And that is the work we um, we really put into the legacy committee. And so they had begun some work um, initially into pulling some data uh, uh, with the police department and looking into that. And so uh, that's our, our data committee. Um, looking at you, Sam, if you're interested. Uh, so that's the legacy committee. Uh, and so those are three committees. We do expect panelists, each panelist to serve on at least one committee. You can serve on more than one committee if you'd like. Um, I think we had a few panelists who were serving um, on at least two and at one point all three committees. Um, so if you're super ambitious, go for it. Uh, the committees do meet, uh, were meeting, I should say, uh, about once a month. Those meetings were um, open meetings in accordance with open meetings law. We played it safe to make those open to the public um, uh, to discuss panel business as needed at those committee meetings. Um, and the committee has the power to set when those meetings happen, how long they are, what the initiatives are, and then bring that back to the panel. The panel may also vote to assign tasks to a committee um, or to ask the committee to look into something or to do something. Um, and I'm trying to think, oh, and one of the first tasks of the committees will to be to identify identify the chairs of those committees. So those, those will be, uh, that could be a co-chair or a single chair to lead the committee uh, lead the committee work, and of course, to um, work with the co-chairs um, on any matters where that's needed. Going through my hands. Uh, Hadassah, anyone, any, anything I'm missing with committee work that would be helpful? Um, no, I think that, I think that about sums it up, you know, pretty much um, we're looking forward to reinforcements and, uh, you know, once, once the teams are put together, the committees are put together, then, you know, you guys can do what you want to do. I mean, you know, you know, <laughs> not do what you want to do, but you know, you have control over when and where and um, those kinds of things. So. And that's actually one thing too. That was the last thing I thought was uh, we still need the committee just to define their roles for our bylaws as well. And so that's something we left open in the bylaws for the committees to identify their own, you know, sub charter, sub bylaws, you know, how they want to run meetings, uh, refine their work. And so that's one of the tasks that's left to be performed by these committees as well. Uh, and so this evening, 
what we'd like to do is go around the circle and um, each of us identify which committee we're interested in serving on um, or, or multiple committees. Um, and if we could, I'm looking at Corey, if we can get those in the minutes for now, then we can start to coordinate um, when those committees meet later. Uh, you all will notice in the SharePoint, there is a contact sheet um, that also lists all the committees that we're in um, to uh, help um, support that work as well. Um, and then once the chairs are identified, Hadassah and I can meet with y'all um, to discuss um, how we track attendance at meetings, you know, some best practices with chairing and that sort of thing. Um, so for right now, I think we'll go around the circle and um, see what committees y'all are interested in. Um, I won't call anyone out. Would anyone like to go first to volunteer for a committee? Lisa, I see the hand. Yes, I'm very excited to join Hadassah on governance. Governance, thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Um, I think uh, I think Milan, you were your hand was next. Yeah, I have a. I, I think I'd like. Um, I'm I'm very happy meet, um, joining the community outreach, um, but I'm also interested in maybe sitting in the others at one point or another just to see how they work, um, and and then to decide whether I want to join a second one or. So would that be a possibility? Oh, yes. Thank you for bringing that up. And uh, Sam, I see your hand. Give me just one second. Yes. To that point, Milan, um, we do send the invites to everyone on the panel. So y'all will get invites to all the committee meetings. You're only expected to, to um, attend the committee meetings that you're an official member of. But yes, you are more than welcome at any time to sit in on and participate in a, any of the committee meetings there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's a good point. Um, Sam. Yes. Yes, I'd love to work on the legacy committee. And I know I've been like boasting a lot about my experience uh, as is the norm with these things, but I want others to feel like comfortable to work with me on this because it's not just about looking at data, right? It's about dealing with the legacy of structural racism and policing and sort of the history of it. And we need like, you know, it's about working through our own historical experiences and looking forward in the data, but you know, you can't just only look at the data. So just putting that out there. Thank you, Sam. And thank you for saying that too. Uh, um, yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Jason, I see the hand. Am I on? Yeah. Um, and I would like to join Sam in the Legacy Committee. There you go. Madeline, Soledad, Victor. Victor, I see the unmute. Yeah, I'm gonna continue the work in the communications committee. And then if anyone has some special skills or just around that or contacts from the community or anything like that, we could definitely use um, any specialized skills that folks have too. Thanks, Victor. I am uh, interested uh, in two. Um, and the first one would be the community outreach and then the legacy i'd like to uh, try my hand at those thank you madeline perfect mm -hmm. soledad what you thinking um yeah so i think uh, i would love to join the community outreach one um yeah, I'm probably the same as uh, Milan. I think I'm I'm gonna watch the other two and see which which where uh, which one I can serve better. Perfect. That sounds perfect. Thank you. Um, and circling back to myself, um, I look forward. Hadassah, I'd like to join the governance committee. Um, I would like to return. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> Don't say that. We are gonna see a lot of each other soon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd say uh, I will continue on governance and legacy. Um, I will, and we'll talk about it, but I, you know, would probably like to step down as chair of that committee. So absolutely. Yeah. Somebody else to come in, but yeah, look forward to, and um, I know that uh, Chico is wanting to stay on legacy and um, Sarah said, anywhere we can use her that isn't too bureaucratic. So I'm guessing either legacy or communications for Sarah, whichever yeah. um, we, you know, we can, we can talk about it. Got it. Okay, 
cool, cool beans. Thank you all. Um, yes, and that's and to reiterate too. Um, yeah, if you want to shift committees, if you want to join other committees, you know, we we just do that um, by popping and saying we want to do that, and that's that's it. That's how it works. Easy peasy. Um, yeah. Sorry, I thought I heard someone. Okay. Um, so next up, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Flo, at long last, Flo, <laughs> for the Interim Independent Police Monitor Report. Thank you. Well, we can't hear you, you're muted. Corey, can you uh, let me share the screen? Amy, you've got the main controls. I think you need to do it. Okay. All right. Um, okay, hi. I'm again, again, I'm, I'm Flo Finkel. I'm serving as the interim independent police monitor. Um, and uh, uh, last month in February, the panel completed one full case file review. There are currently no case file um, reviews completed that are still pending police department disposition. Can you, uh, can you, is the chat on this screen or can you just see the PowerPoint? All right, um, there we go. Um, there are a number of cases awaiting panel review. There are seven. Um, these are cases that the panel voted to review, but the police department has not yet completed its investigation or they're still working on compiling the case file for the panel's review in the various drives. Uh, there's um, uh, some back and forth between uh, the monitor and the department right now in terms of uh, redactions that the department is making. And that has, I think, led in a couple of cases to a slowdown. Um, um, I want to report on three cases that the board, that the board, the panel reviewed. Uh, and made recommendations on allegations and in one case discipline to the uh, police department that the police department closed since the last meeting on February 8th. The first case covers two pages and uh, this is a serious misconduct case 005 of 2022. And in this case, um, uh, during 2020, an officer who was serving as a new officer's training officer engaged the uh, Officer 2 in conversation about whether Officer 2 was single, her appearance, the state of the training officer's marriage, and sex acts that officer wanted to have with Officer 2. Um, and this, some of this type of interaction occurred after the training period as well. There were a number of allegations um, that the former monitor pleaded uh, against Officer One, and the panel reviewed this case and recommended that all the allegations be sustained and that the officer terminated be terminated. This officer resigned before his administrative hearing in front of the chief, and the department um, agreed with the panel's recommendations and sustaining all the allegations and would have terminated the officer, but for the fact that the officer resigned. In its review of the case, the panel made a number of recommendations. First, it uh, recommended that the city revise and update its non-discrimination and anti-harassment policy. It was last revised in 2014, and the panel thought it should include provisions regarding who was mandated reporters of sexual harassment allegations. 
um, the police department responded that it's currently developing its own internal sexual harassment policy to meet uh, the requirements of the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies, and that the department will share a draft of its policy with the panel. Uh, another, alley, another recommendation the panel made was that the city revise and update that same policy to include how departments and or the city will respond to allegations of sex harassment and descriptions of the investigation process and retribution protections. I actually forwarded the panel's recommendations in this case also to Amy Kane, the city's equity manager, and I, uh, she reported to me that she referred the recommendations uh, regarding city policy to the city's human resources department. The panel also recommended that multiple officers, training officers be assigned to each new officer in the police department informed the panel that it already mandates three different um, uh, train, uh, three different officers train new officers. So that was the end of that case. The second case um, stemmed from a uh, domestic violence dispute between a girlfriend and a boyfriend, both independently called the police and separately responding units located first the girlfriend and the boyfriend and the officer who located the girlfriend was informed that the girlfriend had a knife that um, she had used uh, during this dispute. The boyfriend said the girlfriend bit him, tried to stab him and use pepper spray against him. The girlfriend said she uh, was choked to the point of unconsciousness for 12 minutes. Um, the officer who found the girlfriend grabbed her wrist and forced her to the ground. He recovered mace from her and a knife. Um, and she did not have injuries that corresponded with what she said happened. The boyfriend had visible injuries. The officers interviewed these individuals separately and the lead officer determined to arrest the girlfriend. Um, there were two allegations made. One was that the officer apprehended the girlfriend um, improperly used force. And the second allegation was that the, uh, off the second officer, the lead officer failed to arrest the boyfriend. The panel recommended that both uh, both officers be exonerated and the department agreed. The panel also recommended that in this case, the mother of the girlfriend made a complaint and really her primary complaint was a community inquiry it concerned um, mental that she wanted the crisis intervention team to have responded to help her daughter. Um, the team wasn't working. This was very early on a Sunday morning. And the panel recommended that the CERT, that's the acronym for the Crisis Intervention Response Team, be available to respond with the department seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and that the department work with the city to make this best practice a reality. Um, the police department advised the panel the, that the panel should work with the Boldy, uh, that with Amy Kane to uh, assess this recommendation. And she reported to me that the Health and Human Services CERT supervisors assessing call volume to ascertain resource need and possible budget requests to fulfill this recommendation. She said that when all staff are trained, the CERT hours are 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday, and either 9 to 9 or 10 to 10 on weekends. Um, the panel also recommended that this without, uh, the panel also recommended that the department ensure that its domestic violence policy was up to date. And the department responded that its domestic violence procedure is consistent with best practices, but as part of the, the department's effort to be accredited, it's going to reevaluate policies and include any innovative updates. And finally, um, this case, um, involved an officer who uh, is a landlord of a building. Hey, Flo. Hello? Hello? Hey, can I uh, get, provide another update from the yeah. supervisor of the CERT team? So 
The Housing and Human Services Department is also launching a new Community Assistance Response and Engagement or CARE program, um, which is a non-police response similar to STAR in Denver. And so they're also doing that this year. So that's going to also take a lot more of the team's capacity to launch that. Um, but they were very excited that there was such interest in the CERT program. So I just wanted to add that and that they'll be expanding. And then also the CARES pro program is kind of on the table as well. Thank you. Um, the third case that the department closed last month that the panel reviewed involved an officer who's a landlord of a building outside of Boulder. And uh, this officer rented to college students. And there was a discussion that took place between the landlord and his tenant about parties and damage to the property. And the allegation made by the tenant's father was that uh, the uh, landlord identified himself as an officer and implicitly threatened the tenant by saying that he would have his friends drive by and check out the house. Um, the officer uh, admitted that at some point in time, he had told the tenant that he was a Boulder police officer, but he denied ever mentioning in this conversation that he or his friends would drive by the property and check out the building. Um, the father wanted to withdraw the complaint after he got his security deposit back. Um, the panel uh, found, recommended to the department that this allegation be closed is not sustained. The department agreed and the panel recommended that the department counsel the officer that in his role as landlord, the officer refrain from discussing with any renter or the renter's friends or relatives, his job as a police officer and the department agreed to such counseling. And finally, in February, 2023, um, the independent police monitor classified a number of complaints that came in, uh, six as misconduct complaints. Um, one was a serious misconduct complaints and three are community inquiries. As of March 1st, the open monitor um, panel docket, this includes cases that panel hasn't or didn't agree to review but are still not closed. The open monitor panel docket is 19. Uh, that completes my report. Thanks, Flo. And I'm going to hand it over to Hadassa. Awesome. Thanks, Daniel. Um, all right. So next on the agenda is our selection of cases. Um, so just a reminder to the public that these are case summaries, not complaint summaries, um, and that they have summaries of things like police camera footage. Um, wait, is that right? Am I reading the right thing? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Complete camera footage, available evidence, initial investigation, other complaints and extenuating circumstances. Um, so in our initial, um, at, at this point in time, we're just reading the case numbers and which rules are being violated um, because the rest of it is all still confidential information. And then as we saw, um, once the case is closed, Flo will disclose the full um, review of the case and the dispositions of that. So um, that being said, let us jump into it. All right. So um, the way that we typically do this for our new panelists is we'll read out the last three digits um, of the case and then we and then I'll read the violation and then we wrote yay or nay to review. Um, so our first case is case 003. There are two officers involved in this allegation. The first one has a um, rule one, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, general order 150, which is employee speech, expression, and social meeting. Um, officer two is a rule one violation, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, general order, employee speech, expression, and social meeting. And also rule one, integrity value, attended a, a city council meeting while on duty and assigned. Oh, sorry, there was more. 
next page. Um, this is also including officer three, which is a rule one violation compliance with values, rules, and general orders slash general order 150 employee speech expression in social meeting. And rule one compliance with values, rules, and general orders, integrity value attended a city council meeting while on duty. And the last one involved is accident report specialist one, rule one violation for um, compliance with values, rules, and general orders, general order 150, employee speech and expression, social meeting. And rule one integrity value um, attended a city council meeting while on duty. And so, um, just a quick second to review, and then please um, either raise your hand or use the raise hand function if you would like to vote to review, if you are yay. Real quick, Hadassah, I, oh, yes, I need to note for the record, I mm -hmm. need to recuse myself from this vote. Okay. All right. Yay's for review. Sorry, I had... Sorry, I had my hand up as well. I believe I do as well need to recuse. Okay, okay. Corey, we have that. You're you're recording for us, yes, Corey? Perfect, thank you. Okay. Mylin, Maylin, sorry. It's a yay for me. Yay for you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so let's just start again. We'll do yays. We have one, two, Mylin. Perfect. All right, so the yeas have it. Thank you, everyone. Move on to case 004. The allegations, we have two officers involved. Um, the first officer is rule one, compliance with rules, values, and general orders, general order 130, improperly entered individual's home. Rule one, general order 201, prepared an inaccurate report. Rule five, um, police authority and trust reported details of a police encounter with an individual. Um, rule five made a report regarding an individual to the Denver Police Department. Rule five made a report regarding an individual. Um, rule five, so pretty much it's uh, another police authority and public trust. And then rule one, general order 101, unbiased policing. Officer two has an allegation of rule one, general order 130 compliance with values, rules, and general orders. Any questions or complaints, Sam? I see your hand. Yeah, sorry, just general question. Yes. Are these uh, these summaries confidential? And so how much are we allowed, like, should we just avoid talking about the cases during the public meetings? And so we're just going to do like up and down Yes, at this point in time, um, it is just a general discussion about whether or not we'd like to further review the case. Um, and then once we, you know, we have we have the case review in private, and then after the disposition, then it's released in the reports. Yes, thank you for the question. Okay. Do we want to, are you ready to vote? Okay, all right. So yays to review this case, hands raised or... Raise hand function, please. Two, three, so I believe we have three. Okay, thank you. And nays, so we'll vote to not review this case. Two, three, I have three, four. Okay. Okay, so I believe that is a vote to not review this case. Did I count correctly? Perfect. Okay, moving on to 005. Officer one, there are two officers involved. There is a um, allegation against op rule officer one, sorry, for rule one, compliance with values, rules and general orders, general order, 101 undines policing and rule five public police authority and public trust and officer two there's an allegation of rule one compliance with values rules and general orders general order 101 unbiased policing and rule five police authority and public trust um okay questions votes okay let's go ahead and vote yays to review this case 
SAA. Okay. All right, thank you. We have two yeses and votes to not review this case. Okay, I have two, two no's. I'm abstaining. Abstaining, okay, thank you. So in an abstain, do we still need It's it's the 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 majority has it. So if it's majority nay, it's a no. If it's a majority yay, I think it was two to two. So we need at least one vote. One more vote. I thought you had three no's. Should we try again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Let's do the no's again. Just one, real quick. No's, please. Three. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it's a no on zero zero five. All right, zero zero six is a long one. It has um, allegations against seven officers. So, officer one, there's a rule five police authority and public trust, and a rule six use of force. Officer two, police authority and public trust, and Rule six, use of force. Officer three, rule five, police authority and public trust. And rule six, use of force. Officer four, police authority and public trust. And six, use of force. Officer five has a rule five, police authority and public trust. And a rule six, use of force. Officer six, also police authority and public trust. And a use of force. And officer seven, police authority and public trust. And use of force violation. All right, votes to review this case. Okay. All right, I think that is the yeas have it. We'll do a no count just in case. Okay, we're voting yay on 006. And last one, nope, two more. Um, so this one is 001. There is allegation against one officer, one rule one violation compliance with rules, values, and general orders, general order 203, and then also a rule one compliance with values, rules, and general orders, general order 203, and general order 201. All right, votes to review this case. Okay. Okay, so we have four, four. Okay, votes not to review this case, zero, zero, one. Okay, I believe the yeas have it. All right, and our last one is case zero, zero, seven. One allegation against one officer, rule two, conformance with laws, traffic regulations. Votes to review this case. Zero zero seven. Sam, I will vote with you, Sam. Two yeas. Okay, three yeas. Thank you, Lisa. All right, and votes not to review. So I thought that's a no. Okay. It was that a no or a a, a yes, Soledad? It was a yes. Sorry. A yes. Okay, no. so four. Okay, thank you. All right, votes not to review case 007. Okay, Daniel, I see you. All right, so this is a yes to review case 007. Thank you. And um, since uh, this is a new time with all the panelists, I believe we are going to um, assign these cases in, you know, separately once we have everything sorted out um, and can discuss through that. So. Uh, I believe that ends our case review assignments. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Are and we gonna, sorry, are we going to assign these cases now? There's one case we have to assign in executive session, but the others and one from last month, we should be able to assign, right? The one from last month? Okay. There's one from last, there's, 
the first case where we had two recusals, we have to assign that in executive session, but all the rest, it would be better if we assign them now. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought that's what we we're gonna do. I don't, what, what was your plan? I think, I think um, we, I guess we can. It just seemed like there was a lot and we have a lot of new people. And so I thought maybe that this first time we can assign, um, you know, via, via um, email meeting. I wonder if maybe, or what if we did that at the March 18th meeting okay. so that we could also in person work with as, as many of us as possible to make sure new panelists had the opportunity um, to jump on a case review with other panelists. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, Amy. Ooh, Amy, we can't yeah. hear you. <laughs> Headphones died, but the mic didn't. Um, so I'm not sure you can discuss that assignments because that might be considered business on the 18th. That's not a public meeting. Got it. Which also That's means- we couldn't do that over email as well, correct? Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. All right. So let us then go through. Okay. All right. So case 003 was the actually that's the case we have to after yes, public yeah. comment we have to go into executive session to discuss thank you all right zero zero four we did that was a no full case review that was not voted thank you zero zero five no full case review first one is uh zero zero, zero six. six gotcha okay who would like so we have zero zero six we have zero zero one and 007. So we have three cases to review this month. Um, There's also one was a holdover one from the last time. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Who wants to volunteer for? Should we go through each case? Let's say 006. Volunteers. I'll jump in there. Oh, maybe, and we should touch, uh, so panelists, we need at least three people for each case, but um, it can be as many as, 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 as want to serve on it, just at least three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Flo, are you going to record and I can read out who we have? Yeah, I'm ready. I've got yep. a pen in hand. Okay, perfect. Okay, sorry. Hands again. So I have Daniel, myself, Mylin, and I think I saw Jason's hand. No? Okay. Wait, are you assigning all these people or are you picking three? All of them. All, okay. Everyone who has their hand raised. I think that was Soledad as well. Did I see your hand? Yeah, right. This is awesome. Hold on. Me too. And Lisa. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. It's a big one, Flo. <laughs> um, all right. I have, uh, sorry, Daniel, Soledad, Lisa, Hadassah. Anyone else? And Mylin. Um, yeah. I have a question. Yes, Madeline. Is it, would it be in order to, uh, I know you're given the case numbers, but could you just give like a brief one sentence description as to, you know, what the case involves? Mm -hmm. Like I specifically the one that's had seven officers. Mm -hmm. This is, um, the mm -hmm. allegations against all the officers are conducted a high risk traffic stop and pointed mm -hmm. a firearm at the suspect vehicle. Uh, entire okay. summary okay. in the SharePoint drive. Oh, okay. okay. How, um, what case number was that one? If you don't that mind. That was 006. 006. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So let's do case 001. Any volunteers? To review that case. Um, this is with one officer um, did not conduct an adequate investigation and did not document response. I see mm. Daniel, Sam, and Jason. Uh, 
Awesome. And then our last case is 007. This is one allegation of a traffic regulation against one officer. Volunteers for this case. I have Lisa. I see you, Soledad. I volunteer. And Victor and Sam. And then just a question. So if I want to shadow one of the newer panel members, we can do a Zoom and do a one-on-one -on -one and just review these files together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we had discussed, so when Chico joined on, what he did for his first case review was um, sort of shadow somebody else um, and, you know, meet with them, review the stuff material, and then did, do we know, did they have them vote? Were they also a voting panelist? Yeah. Uh, she, yeah, Chico settled, um, shadowed me on that one, and yet uh, he did end up voting on that case, and it was basically, and that's for continuing panelists, um, or I should say, uh, new panelists, when your first case review comes up, so Flo's going to follow up and say, hey, we need to schedule this, when that first one comes out, uh, reach out to the current panelist. Uh, so that they can work, uh, walk you through the process. And of course, that's the subject of our March 18th training as well. Um, so we're not we're not going to throw you in the deep end, but do reach out to that cur the current panelists um, to talk through the process, how they work through things. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll get you through it. Um, so there was one case, the one before this, and this one that had two new panelists and one current and one pre-existing, and so. Um, I don't know if we want to throw Chico and Sarah one each so that they can, each person can shadow one person instead of, you know. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Flo, I can, I'll let you choose whichever you want to Oh, no, in. I'm not choosing. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay. And that's not my role. You can tell me which case you're going to assign Sarah to and which you, one you'll assign Chico to. You got it. Let's assign Sarah to 007. And we'll put Chico on 001, please, Flo. Wait, I'm um, sorry. Um, Chico on 001? Yep. And Sarah on? 007. And okay. I believe 006 had uh, a few. Yeah, that's the one with a bunch of us, so we should be able to cover it. OK. Awesome. And um, we had a leftover case that we did not assign. It was the only case the panel voted last month to conduct a full case review on. It was in the SharePoint drive for the February meeting, ending 039. Um, assuming everyone had a chance to read that. Um, we're looking to form a panel. Yes. Let me just pull it up so I can review it and read it out for people here. February, okay. And our case summary. What was the last three on that one, Flo? 039. 039, thank you. Okay, so as a refresher, this is an allegation against three officers. Officer one, <clears throat> um, there's an allegation of rule one, general order 405 investigative process and rule one customer service value did not provide um, individual complete and updated information. Officer two is rule one, compliance with values, rules and general orders, customer service value. Officer three, is a rule one compliance with values, rules, and general orders, customer service value. All right, and volunteers to review this case, 039. Thank you, Madeline. I see you, Madeline. Mm -hmm. You can throw me on there, Flo. So I have Madeline, Hadassah, and... Um... Mylan. Milan. Milan. Mm -hmm. Milan, Milan, thank you. Mm -hmm. Get it, sorry. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And with that, we can move to public comment. I will let Daniel pull up his 
little uh, stopwatch One, for two. us. And then we will go through um, our current attendees. And um, do I have the power to unmute people or? That'll go through Corey. So okay. we'll do, um, I can run through the rules if you want, if that, yeah, okay. Um, so uh, every member of the public will be asked if they'd like to comment and unmuted to answer. Some members of the public will be coming to you one by one to offer you the opportunity to give feedback. Um, the public will get two unimpeded minutes to comment. Um, if there's an interruption for any reason, we'll make sure to stop the clock so you get your full two minutes. Um, I will give a verbal warning at 20 minutes or 20 minutes, <laughs> 20 seconds till the end of your time. Uh, and then we ask the staff facilitator to mute your feed at two minutes to keep us um, uh, keep, keep this fair for everyone. Uh, panelists. You may offer short responses at the end of a comment. Um, and if you'd like to, uh, just shoot me a chat or you know, after each comment, I'll just take a pause to see if you're interested. Um, we try to keep those pretty brief uh, um, uh, just, just to keep things moving along. But yes, you, you do have the freedom um, to respond back. And give me just a second here to share my screen. Can you all see that okay? Okie dokie. And then I have to bring up participants, attendees. Awesome. So Corey, if we could start with Annie. Annie, would you like to give public comment tonight? Uh, you are, have the power to unmute yourself. No, um, this is just Annie from the Daily Camera, just covering as always. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Annie. And I like the always at the end there. Thank you for your dedication to this work. Um, next up, uh, John Herrick, you can unmute yourself. Would you like to give a uh, comment tonight, John? Uh, no, thanks. This is John Herrick with Boulder Reporting Lab. Just tuning in. Thanks. Thanks so much, John. And thank you for your coverage and attention to this work. Uh, next up, we have uh, Lynn Siegel. Lynn, you'll be able to unmute yourself. Would you like to give comment this evening? Yeah, this is real slim. I follow 10 boards. I've been on another board, Open Space Mountain Parks, and every all the boards get three minutes for their public hearings or for, or for public comment on the boards. Uh, it's only city council that does two minutes. I'm, I'm really surprised and upset that, that the police don't feel that people have more than two minutes to do this. And I've got um 25 seconds left it's like i don't think i even got my two minutes well forget it you know it's like i i don't think much of this board already um now it's going up to 43 seconds i i don't get it what's what's going on here yeah, Lynn, you have a full two minutes. You have a full two minutes to give um, comments. So if you have additional comment, you, you have about a minute to go. I my stopwatch wasn't working. Could I have my two minutes at least? It's not. It's at one minute now, and it's going up. It's just I don't. I don't think you. This. Yep, Lynn, you you have up till two minutes. Uh, to give comment this evening. Yeah, but can you start me at two minutes so I can see the countdown timer so I can know when I'm stopping? It's at <laughs> one minute. It's it's at 43 seconds. It's all over the place. Yeah, Lynn, that, that timer is counting up to two minutes. It's an up count? None of the city meetings have an up count. It starts at two minutes and it counts down to zero. Now it's at one minute and 28. It's going up. I'm getting more. This is confusing. Um, <laughs> what's going on here? Now I've got a minute and 40 seconds. Now a minute and 44 seconds. Now I'm getting more and more time. I guess if I just wait long enough, I'll get more time. Lynn, you have about 10 seconds left here. 10 seconds? Whoa, that's not, this is not okay. Thank you, Lynn. Um, yes, and, and just as a reminder, as always with our meetings, that 
timer counts up to two minutes for each member of our community that would like to give comment. Panelists, any follow-up from y'all? Just give it a pause for a second. Yeah, I would just follow up. Um, you know, Lynn, I've seen you at our meetings, you know, multiple times. Uh, our timer has not changed from the very first meeting that you attended. Um, so I'm sorry for any confusion. Thanks, Victor. Next up, we have uh, Martha Wilson. Martha, you can unmute. Would you like to give com uh, public comment today? Yes. Um, hi, friends. Um, happy International Women's Day. It's amazing to have been a part of the interview process and to now see all your beautiful faces filling up the screen. Um, I'm excited and hopeful and have every confidence in y'all. Um, please know that since I was an in protest resignation, um, I'm still around as a member of the public for anything that is not case specific that you guys might need. Um, I do have a couple of notes. Um, one, I'd like to know what the best way to share the ordinance suggestions that have come in to the 8430 amendments at gmail.com email. Um, two, I'm going to be poking around in the legacy review committee. Um, but if there are documents that you guys can't find in the government um, committee, uh, I might have them saved on my PC somewhere. Um, and three, I didn't catch the case number, but with regard to, um, I don't know what I'll call the, the pervert patrolman, um, it is a shame that that officer was allowed to resign. Uh, but I personally think that such deplorable actions warrant reporting to the National Police Accountability uh, Project Registry so that other police departments know what they are potentially welcoming into their communities. That's all I have for you. Thank you, Martha. Uh, panelists, any follow-up thoughts? I think for now, Martha, um, for updates for ordinance, I think either, I know that Sarah and Amy are both, or they're working on that together. Um, so Amy or Farah, or you can always send it to um, us at governance or come pop into governance and um, we'd be happy to notate it and escalate it from there. So any of, any of those venues, even I think communications and committee, basically just pop in, let us know what you want and we will we will get that to the right parties and make sure that that is considered for any amendments. Amy, I, I think you're muted. You got a microphone uh, thing. Write me up there for us. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Um, can I chime in, Hadassah? <laughs> yeah, Martha, Sarah, and I will be reaching out as well. So, thank you for collecting all that info. I'll hand it back to Hadassah then. Awesome. Well, I think um, that is us for a, that is it for us tonight. Mm -mm, and, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, Flo. Oh, yes, we are going into an executive session. Yeah, right? it should it should be brief. Okay, perfect. Um, so we will be leaving the public. Thank you all tonight for joining and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. So if the, yeah, you know, panelists, panelists, panelists.